Good morning and grand rising. We are here with another episode of the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. Good morning, grand rising. Good light. Bon lundi, je suis la sisi vec la magnifique. Sir Bayo. We are here with another episode of the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. This Magic Monday, we are talking about working with the divine masculine. And I don't know about you, Sir, but this is one that is is hitting home for me. When you brought up this subject as one that was requested by a popular demand, I was very excited about it because we, we spent a lot of time uh, giving praise and giving flowers and recognition to the divine feminine, which we should. But we oftentimes kind of skip over the divine masculine and the importance of recognizing the importance of supporting the importance of loving our divine masculine in order for us to grow um, not only as a community, but on a personal level, on a spiritual level, that the divine masculine is so, so important in, in our growth as people. So this is wonderful. I am excited well because this show was something that was placed on my heart just due to an experience that that I had last week and um, I will share that later but I totally agree with you as it relates to the divine masculine I think that we are now in a place where we are almost unaware of who the divine masculine is what the divine masculine looks like to the point where when you are even in the presence of this energy I think a lot of times because we, some of us just are walking around with so much trauma as it relates to the men in our own lives that even when you are around an energy that is so magnificent as this, you almost don't even know how to respect it. And I see a lot of women, even in my own circle, creating unnecessary loneliness in their lives unnecessary trauma in their lives pushing out a lot of men who would be deemed exactly what you need in your life because of unhealed trauma as it relates to the divine masculine that when one that is real one that truly walks in an energy of divinity his energy is overlooked because it is unrecognizable. I think that was perfectly stated. I think that a lot of times as divine feminine, we have gotten to a place where I don't want to actually use the words we feel like we don't need, but let's be real. I come across feminines all the time who say that I don't need, I don't need. And this is something that we are going to talk about today. The fact that we hear that so often and that women are actually starting to believe that. And that in itself is toxic. That in itself is traumatic. That in itself is false. And that in itself is a lie. And I'm going to be the first to say it. It's, it's a lie. We do need the masculine. We have both masculine and feminine energy. So not only do we need that energy, but source has made it where we have two on this earth, a masculine and a feminine. And if we did not need them, they would not be here. Source provides us with everything that we need in this life on this earth and the masculine is something and someone that we need so without further ado let's get into the show on today's episode of hoodoo and chill 
we want to take the opportunity to touch on a subject that isn't about much in our modern spiritual community. Balance is essential. It's a factor as it relates to magic and spirituality. The ability to dwell in both the physical and the medical metaphysical, but also the balance of divine masculine and feminine. Our beloved divine feminine archetype reigns supreme in modern spirituality due to the stigma and the demonization of the divine masculine. The purpose of today's shows is to remove the negative cloak that shrouds the divine masculine and also explain his importance as well as the importance of balance. We will also discuss how to work with the divine masculine as well as why healing from trauma prohibits a relationship with the divine ancestors. Topics on today's show may be triggering for some, and we understand that this episode, you know, is one that you can't stay completely for. That's the way I'll I'll say that. However, bringing awareness to the matter during this week, especially with it being Father's Day, is necessary Our ultimate goal today is to bring you one step closer to your ancestors and help you usher in any healing that may be needed during this process. The Hoodoo and Chill podcast will return after this short ad break. Hey. Are you enjoying the show? If so, don't forget to follow Hoodoo and Chill on Apple and Spotify and leave us a five-star rating. Tell us what you love about the show in the reviews. We love to hear from you. To keep this free content on air, please support the show by sending a donation of love using one of the donation links in the descriptions. Donations keep our podcast alive and also give us the ability to enhance our content. We graciously thank you for your support. Now, Back to the show. This breaks my heart so much, not only as a divine masculine, just because of just the way who we are are being interpreted. And I was so triggered last week. I was asked to teach a class on this, how to work with the divine masculine. And in my logical way of applying magic or spirituality or or when I'm teaching it to someone as it relates to this subject in my head I'm thinking well if we're going to call upon our male ancestors if we are going to work with male spirits the 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 masculine root all of these things that are correlated with this work first I have to make sure and check that it's safe for you to do this work and stay with me on this Meaning, before you go to the crossroads with me, before you go to your own personal altar, what are you bringing with you? Are you coming with a love for the divine masculine, an admiration of the protection energy, the ability to learn, heal, and grow, and the transformation energy that walks with the divine masculine? Because the journey of a man is a journey of transformation from the moment he is birthed. That journey of, that fool's journey, might I say, of becoming a man from a boy. So when you go to the crossroads with me or to your own personal altar, what are you bringing with you? And I had to ask this question before we could even get into the workings of that class. I said, well, You know, who in here has a divine masculine in their life that is positive and they look up to and this, that, and third, and a few hands with up. And then I ask the question, well, you know, who is still dealing with some trauma? I mean, almost everybody's hand went up and this is not a small class. My heart was broken. So I said, you know, okay, well, we can't, I can't teach you how to work with spirits if, if we are still harboring around some energy. We we need some healing first. Well, let's see if what can we do to lay the groundwork for the physical healing that is needed in our lives. Remember, I always say this, that 
real magic is a beautiful balance between the metaphysical as well as the physical. Meaning, how can you work with male spirits if in your heart you don't have a good relationship with the men in your own lives? I started offering some suggestions on what we could do to kind of warp this energy or heal it. And it took everything in me not to cry in front of this class because even as I'm offering suggestions that came from spirit on what to do to heal this trauma, I was met with so much resistance to the point where it was like, I refuse. I'm not going to do that. Now, granted, the majority of my class is women. So me as a man, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what have we done so wrong? How did we get to this point? What can I do as a man to make sure that my name, my legacy is never associated with this energy? What can I do to make sure that my offspring never be a part of this? Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for and whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal that has this bag attached to it? Are we doing that? I want to be the first as a divine feminine to apologize. To apologize to you, Seer. To apologize to all those divine masculines out there. And I'm not saying that every divine masculine is, you know, this is worthy of of praise, okay? Because every divine feminine is also not worthy of praise because, you know, some people vibrate on very low frequencies and they like to stay there. And those are people that you want to stay away from. But for those of us who vibrate on high frequencies but are still subject to this ridicule and this verbal abuse, I am sorry. I apologize because you don't deserve it. Now we talked about trauma and we we talked about how we as divine feminines feel like we have been traumatized by the divine masculine. Most of the time it has to do with something that happened maybe in the childhood um, where you didn't have a great relationship with your father, maybe a null and void relationship with your father, maybe some sort of abuse even if it hadn't stemmed from there, maybe it was later on in life where you had a, a abusive or a bad relationship with a significant other, multiple significant others. And because you've never experienced what it feels like to have a divine masculine who actually cares for you, who take, who protects you, who, who is healthy, who loves you, you haven't experienced this, so now you've grouped all of the masculines into being these monsters because that's the way we explain them, these men who are so horrible. When I thought about this and I thought about the fact that, okay, we have to find some way to heal, we have to find a starting point on where to heal feminines, we need to start with us, especially those of us who have sons. Because when I started to uh, revisit how a divine masculine not being personally talked to so much so in your face, but actually hearing um, the chatter and that what is surrounding him, for instance, I see a lot of male bashing. I'm just going to be real. I see a lot of male bashing. I hear a lot of groups of women that male bash. How many 
how many of us know this group of women who will get together and you have your glass of wine and you sit there and you talk about men and how wrong they were and how wrong they did you and how terrible they are and how there are, is shortage and none are out there and they're not shit. However, you have your son and his friends in the next room and they hear this, okay? So now you are going from being what you feel like as a victim, all right? I've been traumatized to being a traumatizer, see? Because when you sit there and you talk about men and you bash them, even if it's not in front of your son's face, but he is within ear's length and he's able to hear you talk about a man that he is about to grow into, that looks like him, that talks like him, same color, same background, same ethnicity, and he's not shit. What do you think he is going to think about himself? How do you think that he will think women feel about him that look like you? Black women, we're just gonna say it, black women. You have already set the precedence and the tone that you ain't shit. You have turned from the victim to the abuser without even recognizing it. See, I think that it's time for us as divine feminines to start taking some responsibility and accountability for this cycle that has been created because we do take part in it, honey. We do. And I say honey because I'm saying honey to all of you women. We take part of it. We've done it. I've seen it. And so have you. You hit on a good point when you said, um, and I'm not going to stay here for too long, but I just want to bring this up because this is this is something I think most men, specifically black men or men of color can relate to, is before you have even developed all of the skills or the mindset that you need to be who you are supposed to be, you are already walking with this stigma on you that you are the enemy. You're the bad guy. Your mom don't like you because you look like your dad and this is what he did to me. So it's your fault. Or then you get out into the world and then you found out that you, you're public enemy number one just because of the color of your skin, you know? But I'm not staying there today because that's not what this whole entire message is about the way this show is going to go today and we might go a little bit over and that's fine first we are going to reintroduce you to who the divine masculine is and the history that it has and in our practices atrs hoodoo conjure work the whole nine then we are also going to talk before we end this show about recognizing acknowledging and also overcoming trauma to work fluidly with our divine masculine ancestors as well as those who are currently in our lives as well so when i say what does the divine masculine look like who is he i think some of you need to just be reminded of the men that you do come from when i say to someone take your father out or go have a conversation or go do something with your uncles the next time you want to meet me with resistance because of what happened to you in that situation i want you to think about the men that you came from right the men that were stripped of every piece of property the families that they had because what they don't what we don't talk about in the transatlantic slave trade is most of us already had families before we got over here right may have had two or three wives that he had to let go of 10 or 12 children that he'll never see again or that were shipped off to wherever part of the world and then when he got on this soil nine times out of ten guess what he created another family and was another man for somebody else that's some of the men that you come from 
or it was that man that was standing right there watching his two children getting taken away from him after he raised them loved them when it worked in somebody else's field never got a dime for it and protecting them at every bit that he could that he could do just think about his pride as he watched his wife or his children being sold to someone else but we want to practice hoodoo right we we talk about the rape of our women think about how many of your ancestors had to stand back and watch it happen and go to work the next day and still put food on the table some of your ancestors that share a crop for 10 20 30 40 50 years and took care of generations upon generations the only reason why you are in the house that you're probably living in is because he made a way possible or the land that was left down to you. The man that probably went out there and worked that land, had his hands, his feet, his blood, sweat and tears into that soil. The same men who created the farming industry in America that's been stolen from them, right? And industrialized into something else that they don't even have a piece of anymore. That you should be pouring love and education and black excellence and just excellence in general. I don't care what your, your, your race is, you know? The one that you pushed out, the one that you helped create, the one that you loved and nursed. But then again, that goes back to that other conversation that, you know, mothering is not where it's supposed to be so it, i can understand why some of you can't see the divinity in your own son because the mothering is off the hoodoo and chill podcast will return after this short ad break make major decisions without knowing the outcome beforehand? Would you like to know where your relationship is headed or what the future holds in store for you? Sir Bale and I want to assist you in making all the right decisions so that you may live your best life. Are you seeking a new career? Does your love life need insight? Or maybe you want to connect with your ancestors or past loved ones. The realm of divination holds all the answers to your future. Allow us to use our psychic abilities, bone reading, cardamancy, tarot, and mediumship to uncover the answers to your future. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com under classes and services to book your appointment today. Your spirit guides are waiting to speak to you. That's hoodooconjurerootwork.com to uncover your destiny today. You know, when you brought this show to me, Sierra, I didn't, my plan was not to get on the divine feminine. But it's been put on my heart right now that I need to get on us. Because honestly, like I said before, we need to take some accountability in what we're doing here, y'all. What are we doing? Besides trying to just put ourselves on a pedestal. Not saying that we shouldn't be on a pedestal, not saying that we shouldn't be praised and all of those wonderful, fantastic, good things because we should. But why are we leaving our men behind? See, because that trauma that you have going on, that you feel, or that has been stemmed or created by a masculine, must be healed by a masculine. Did you hear me? The trauma that you have experienced 
by the hands of a masculine must be healed by a masculine. It cannot be healed by a feminine. Do you hear me? How that healing takes place can be done in different manners, whether it be by a man that you've come in contact with, doesn't even have to be a lover, a companion who shows you what a divine masculine is, who offers that protection and that guidance and that love and that support, who helps heal that portion of you. Whether it be by your son who you raise that values women, okay? That values women because he knows that his mother has poured into him and told him he is a king and has shown him what a true masculine is. Therefore, that portion of you is being healed or whether it be by spirit, because sometimes a divine masculine may not show up in your life, in the physical, in this lifetime. So if you're looking for one and you haven't found one, that's okay. But you better believe, you better believe, I promise you, there is one in the spiritual realm that is willing and able and ready to work with you and help you heal all of those wounds that were caused by a masculine. There are different ways. Things are so distorted and twisted and torn down. And I know that as feminines, we feel like, why do we always have to put the work in? Why do we always have to do the work? That's who we are. Who didn't really do too much for me. He would sit outside in the front yard. He would smoke his weed and his cigarettes. And he would burn um, old dish rags to keep the mosquitoes away. That's country. It's old school. I say all of that to say that I did that this morning. I did it in that my granddaddy showed me showed me that that's what i want y'all to hear in my voice the the how proud i am my granddaddy showed me that didn't do much for me but that little bit that he did show me i take it with me to my grave you know that the men play so much of a vital role in this practice but i say to you that there's something that the divine masculine has put into you as it relates to hoodoo conjure root work or any spiritual practice. But see, the divine masculine magic is not glamorous. It's not so, let me sit you down and teach you the earth when it starts. No, that, it's not like that. You might have heard your granddaddy say something like, oh, if you hear a dog howl at 12, somebody didn't die. And God believe you me, somebody has passed away. Little stuff like that that's small and you think that it's nothing but it's so impactful i think about this trend and this rage of everybody wants to learn herbalism and root work and, and every i'm a root worker and, and hoodoo bay and all of that right i wasn't gonna put my foot on any necks today and i'm not but i'm gonna say this if that altar is not full or has at least one man on that altar that was a farmer that did put his hands in the in the soil that did actually till the land baby you still haven't learned about root work yet if you think for one second that root work is only as what was in your mother's kitchen or your granny's little garden baby you still have not learned root work yet you you still you still kitchen witching and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, but that ain't root work. Because those real root worker men would, would, would look at you and say, well, you tell me the names of the different soils and why that soil is that color and how much water and buoyancy will it hold and what do you need for this? Well, you go tell me where to go find these seeds outside. Tell me the name of those root. You show me this. How much land can we tell that we're going to yield for this crop? How many times must we turn the soil over to, to bring forth this? What, what part of the swamp do I need to go to go pick some sense and snake root, right? Because even though it's not in this pretty package of herbalism and botany, it's root work. Do not skip over those men that died tilling the soil that we walk on today 
Do not skip over those men who lost blood, sweat, tears, and labored in the soil and died with back problems because of this land. Do not skip over those men who share crops and created farms and industry to feed your family, your generations, and so on and so forth, and whole communities. Do not skip over these men that have had their hands, feet, sweat, and blood in this soil since we got here. If you Come to me t- thinking that you are this great glorified root worker shaking around a cinnamon stick, but you don't know how to go outside and forage and put your hands in the land and tell me to, about the different soils. Baby, you're not there yet. I love you. Keep learning. Keep doing what you're doing. It's working. But be real with yourself. Go find out who that grandfather was that had a farm. Put him on your altar. Maybe put a little jar of dirt, something that he grew. And then come back to me and tell me how your root work has changed and how it has evolved. And when you touch the root, when you touch the soil, it responds to you. I just thank you for that. Thank you, Sarah, because I don't, I think that we overlook our male ancestors so often. You know, when we want to look look for our male ancestors, when we want our male ancestors to come is when we want to heck somebody, when we want some work put in, right? That's when we want to call them, right? The male ancestors that will, you know, cause havoc, wreak havoc, get revenge. Same with the male spirits, right? I work with Loa. You want the male spirits when you want to wreak some havoc on something, right? That's when we want to call them. But when it's time to heal and it's time to grow and it's time to flourish, we look at the divine feminine. We look at the the feminine spirits. It's so funny. I'm sitting here thinking about the movie, The Color Purple. I don't know why. This is one of my mother's favorite movies. And... I think about uh, how demonized the men were in that movie. But I sit back and I think about it. Every man in that movie was working the land. And when you see the credits at the end, Mr. is tilling the soil. And I, when we, 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 we strip men of this, of this men can't create. Yes, we can. The truth is, the power of creation lies in both. It's just different. It's just different for men. Say that again. The, the power, power of, of creation, creation lies, lies in, in both. both. It's, it's just, just different. different. You cannot have creation without both. Feminines, we have to understand that. We have to wrap our minds around that and stop demonizing the masculine. Listen. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Sierra, but as I say, and I say, I will say it during every show. I will continue to say it as long as we podcast. We come from a place when we tell stories, we tell you stories and we tell you things that happen because of our own experiences. So I'm going to use myself. Okay. My father was nowhere around. My mother was 17 when she had me. My father was nowhere around. When my father recognized and finally came to the conclusion that, yes, I was his daughter, he still didn't come around. My father was a drug addict and an alcoholic. He burned down his house and he died from throat cancer. My daughter's father was abusive to me for 10 years, 10 years of abuse. Almost killed me several times. And I am airing this out to the public because it's real. It's me. It's my life. I went through many relationships where the men were terrible, horrible, but I never took it upon myself to say that all masculines are nothing. They're all the same. They're all monsters. They will all do this to me. Never. And I can tell you horror stories of what I have been through when it comes to men. But when I go to that altar, and I call upon my loa, they are men. When I call upon many of my ancestors, they are men and they come through. 
I don't sit around and drink and say all masculines and all men because of the time I was born and the things that I have gone through, they aren't shit. How do you expect us to evolve and grow and have healthy relationships and a healthy community and raise healthy children and make sure that they're successful, make sure that they're taken care of? If we are constantly bashing our partners, they are, they are our partners. We are not in this alone. We are in this together and all we have is each other, Black people. That's all we have. And I'm sorry, Divine Feminines, I love you, but we cannot do it by ourselves. I don't care. You can talk to your blue in the face and tell me I don't need, I don't need, I don't need. But if you are a straight female, let a masculine come up to you and say, baby, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to love you. I bet you 100% you will change your attitude. So don't ever come to me and try to play me like that. I've heard it before. So that whole, I don't need, I don't want to hear it anymore. Let me acknowledge the trauma that the divine masculine has caused many of you. Because what I'm not going to do is not be honest and say that we don't have a lot of work to do. I'm not going to lie and say that we have not dropped the ball. The truth is a lot of you don't respect the divine masculine, don't know what it looks like, don't know what it feels like because you've never had it in your life. I can't fault you for hating men. If all you know is trauma and abuse, financial instability, unbalanced love, unbalanced sex, unbalanced healing, I can't fault you. I'm not mad at you. I'm here to offer you some empathy today and 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 I and I pray that you have an encounter with your ancestors with God and, and specifically with a divine masculine. I pray that spirit opens up the door that a real man, a real man steps in your life and shows you what the divine masculine walks in. Because that's just that's that's truly what it boils down to. A lot of you just have not had the experience and when it was presented to you you turned it down or you walked away from it because you didn't know what was standing in front of you but i hope well, that, that point right there i don't mean to cut you off but that point right there what you're saying right there is i just want to interject and say recognize because like Sir just said, it's been presented to you, but you turned it down because you don't recognize it. That's where the healing comes in. That's where you have to do the work to heal so that when he does come, you recognize it. So my heart just goes out to those of you who have just haven't had the opportunity to experience that. I think there's this portion of spirituality that a lot of that isn't talked about. And even though I'm not, you know, Ifa or anything like that, one of my favorite books, and I'm this is mandatory if you are my mentee, you have to read Finding Soul on the Path of Orisha, because that book to me is such a fundamental spiritual. Oh my gosh, I love that book. But what I love what Miss Correll opens up about is her trauma and abuse with the divine masculine and then it was those same men that when they died petitioned her to work with her and she speaks about how she had to find it in herself to to heal from that trauma that she's dealt with to go on this journey this isn't for everybody this is not for the lighthearted. And this isn't even something that will be presented to many of you. But what some, what a lot of people are not going to tell you in spirituality is that the same people that traumatized you will be the same ancestors that come through wanting to work with you. You do not have to respond to that call. That's a personal experience. You can, you, you don't even have to acknowledge that energy at all, but I don't want to 
give you false pretenses as to how deep your ancestral journey can go. I would be lying to you if I didn't say at least one of you in here with me right now will experience this phenomenon. Because healing for our ancestors and healing for the divine masculine is going to look different for each and every last one of us. Your makeup, your energy, your ability to love unconditionally may be the journey or the duty that spirit puts in front of you to help heal some of these ancestors that were traumatized. What are we going to continue to do? Continue to let our sons grow up to be rapists and abusers, financially unstable, out here trying to do street stuff that ain't, I mean, you can't even do that no more in 2022. When are we going to step up and assert our duty to end this? You have to find some type of healing. You cannot skip over this and just throw men in a lump sum because something happened to you. Baby, I got a hug for you and love for you, but you got to find something. You know, you, you we, we talk about these ancestors and this hoodoo. And I want to do that. I wanna do that. Man, you, you, you what? Okay, let's talk about the women. The same abuse that you went through, them grannies on that altar went through that times 10. You don't want to hear about some of their trauma stories as it relates to the divine masculine. Or just the masculine, period. I'm not even going to use the divine masculine. Divine, I'm going to say just, just men in general. Let's talk about some of their horror stories, right? Yet these women still found it in their hearts to love, raise men, and instill the, the right and the best in them. No matter what they went through at the hands of their fathers and their brothers or their cousins or white men or society, they still found healing. They still found a way to love those sons. And we're not talking about the two, three kids we have now. We're talking about 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 heads of children. So when I say I don't care what you've been through, it's not that I don't care. I care. I have nothing but love for you. What I'm saying is nothing that you have been through is bad enough that you can't find healing for you to ascertain all of your power, all of your blessings, for you to raise a better son, for you to be a better woman and a better mother, better whatever gender role you fall under the spectrum. This acknowledging this healing is hurting us. It's not helping us. It's not helping our communities. All we're doing is raising up another generation of abusers and losers instead of doing the work, the work right now to say this has to stop. You want to talk to me about your trauma at the hands of the divine masculine? Step up and make sure that it never, make sure that your son is nothing like that. When you look him in the eyes, make sure that you are instilling knowledge in, in him that he will never be what happened to you. And if you don't have a son, you got a brother, you have a cousin, you have a nephew, or there's a little boy somewhere living near you. Go appreciate the divine masculine in him. We have to start letting these youth see it in themselves early on. Maybe if these men, these young men felt divine, if they felt that they were capable to go out here, if they knew who they were earlier, we could avoid some of this. But if you skip over this work, what's going to happen when a little girl come to you or a woman comes to you and says what your son did to her? how he can't treat her right because you don't want to do your healing and create something better. What you skip over, you will create. Toy. That was a whole word right there. You know, everything that we've talked about on this show today is just it's beyond us being able to tell you how to work with the divine masculine. As we're doing this show, I'm starting to realize that 
this is going to take more than those of you who are unhealed in terms of the masculine and want to work with the masculine just listening to us on this podcast. Therapy is important. It's real. It's helpful. Mentors are essential. If you really want to get to the root and you really want to heal, you want to do this work and you are really interested and heartfelt about having a better relationship with the masculine in this physical realm, in this physical realm, in the spiritual realm and internally within you because you carry both energies. You have to do the work. So I am going to encourage you today to not just listen to this podcast, but to reach out to a mentor to get you started on that path, whether it be Seer, myself, or someone else. It's necessary. And I said it before, I will say it again. In order for you to heal from what the masculine has done to you, a masculine is the one that needs to help you heal. Not a divine feminine. I'm not saying a mentor. You can't have a divine feminine mentor. What I'm saying is in order for that void and in order for that trauma to be healed, it is going to take a masculine being to heal that. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you guys take that with you and stop looking to other feminines to help you heal from what the masculine has done because all that we do is talk talk and have pity parties and cry and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with with having those feelings and validating those feelings and they're real and you should but as I always say you cannot live there you have to move on and you have to learn how to heal that portion of yourself so that you can live a happy life. So that you can be ready, prepared, and you can recognize that healthy divine masculine when he approaches you and not shun him and turn him away. This has been a spectacular show. I enjoyed it. I encourage you again, a mentor, get one, start there. Because Sierra and I can't go into in-depth steps and tell you exactly how to heal your particular trauma. It takes more than that. And I want to see more healed women out there. I want to see more women out there who are willing to love. Who are willing to open their heart. And give the Divine Masculine a chance. This has been a spectacular show, and I just want to thank all of our listeners for lending us your time today. I know that we said some things that might have triggered you all, especially when I talked about working with ancestors that might have traumatized you. I want to go on the record and say this is not something that I push on people that they should do alone. Okay, you need guidance with this. There are workings, there are rituals that can be done to help promote healing as well as acknowledgement of the trauma right at your altar. But this is something that you do need some type of professional guidance through. You might open up doors to trauma that you don't want to have to deal with alone. So that's not something for the lighthearted and I don't push it on everyone. That's something you need to be ready for and you need guidance in that. To all of my male listeners today, to any of my divine masculine identifying listeners, I say to you today, love your partner a little bit more today. Be 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 a little bit extra today. Say I love you a few more times today. When you hug your partner, hug them just a little bit tighter and a little bit longer. Do something extra special for your kids today. Spend some time with them, just you. Or go be a light in your community to someone. If it's a single lady living living near you, take her a few groceries. You have the money to do it. 
go wash somebody's car for them. Go put some gas in your mother's vehicle today. Go be a man, a divine masculine today. Help me usher in a new generation and a new narrative for who we are. So that when we are in the midst or in the presence of the public, they not only recognize you, but your divinity. And it will not be overlooked, but most importantly, respected. Because you deserve the respect that a man is due. To my women, go love your partner a little bit more today. Take your father for breakfast. It doesn't have to be Father's Day to do it. Call your uncle, your grandfather, tell him you love him. Remind him of something that he did that impacted your life. And remind him that you feel so protected by him. Find a a divine masculine in your life that has impacted you in some way and acknowledge it. You can help change the narrative. Acknowledge the divinity when you see it. Don't overlook it. Don't disrespect it. Please don't do that. Tell your son that he is powerful today. Remind him of who he is. And teach him and help train him to be a better man than his father and his forefathers. I leave you all today with nothing but love, peace, and I hope, I hope, a path of healing for everyone who needs it. I want to remind all of you that you are strong, you are powerful, you come from the best of the best, the best men, the best women, the best whomever gender identified as whatever. You come from the best of it all. Doctors, lawyers, magicians, theologists, psychologists, teachers, farmers, botanists, herbalists, the whole nine is in your bloodline, which is divine. Today is the day that you will step out into your prosperity. You will have the life that you deserve. You will take back whatever has been taken from you and you shall protect your energy at all costs. May your hands be like the Midas touch and everything that you touch may turn to gold and prosper with just one touch. I send you all today in love and prosperity. And with that, my people, I release you into the atmosphere.